Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inizor Education. So we continue course called Math for uh, Math Plus and Problems, presented on Unizor.com. Um, this course requires the prerequisite knowledge, which is presented in another course, which is called Math for Teens, on the same website. Everything on the website is free, uh, no advertisement and uh, there are some other courses like physics for teens and relativity um, okay so now the course math plus and problems is dedicated to unusual problems which are not really illustration of the theory presented in the previous course math for teens but rather forces you to think about certain things outside of the box creatively analytically and come up with certain solutions which are not obvious, at least from the first glance. Okay, so today's uh, problems which we will solve, there are four of them. Um, they are about numbers, and that's why I classify these problems as arithmetic numbers. And this is within the arithmetic classification, um, lecture number six. So, arithmetic zero six. All right, so let's solve problems. Problem number one. We have some natural number, positive integer number n, which contains only ones and zeros. Something like this. The total number is unknown, but I know that number, the digit 1, appears 111 times. number digit zero is a known number of times whatever so question is can this number be a square of another integer number now as usually i'm encouraging you to pause the video and think about this problem yourself it's gar it's great if you come up with a solution um, if not, just you know, continue listening to um, the lecture. By the way, every lecture on unizor.com has notes, written notes. They're just presented parallel to the video. So there is a video and there is notes. And notes contains the same problems in written uh, format. And there are even some hints. Um, sometimes there are solutions as well, if it's more difficult problem. But sometimes only hints. Or maybe not, not at all, not even hints. But in any case, it makes sense to take a look at the problem in notes on this website. And basically, it's presented the same thing, uh, the same way as I presented here. And maybe hint will help you to solve it yourself. Because the best thing, if you can solve it yourself, that's the whole purpose of the course, to basically teach you how to think uh, creatively, analytically, unusually. So, can it be a square? Okay, let's just think about it. Oops. First of all, the answer is no. It cannot be a square. And here is why. Now, we have 111 times number 1. Now, recall that if the sum of the digits of the number is divisible by 3, then the number is divisible by 3. If sum of the digits divisible by 9, then the number itself is divisible by 9. It's very easy to prove. You just have to um, present the number as, in its decimal notation, as something like this. This is 10 to the power of 0, which is 1. Now here, if you subtract 1 from each one, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, and then add the same thing, Ten to the power of zero 
minus one e zero. <coughs> so basically, you uh, subtract a zero, a one. These are digits, and then add them. Now these guys are nine 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 nine, whatever number of nines is. So this is divisible by three and by nine. That's why this is divisible by three and by nine. So if the sum of the digits is divisible by three or nine, then the number is divisible by three or nine. Now this sum of the digits is 111 times one is 111. 111 is divisible by three. But it's not divisible by nine. Now question is, if the number is divisible by three but not divisible by nine, can it be a square? Obviously not, because if this number n has certain number of prime numbers which is in its representation, then n square would have two of each. I know that there is number three among the divis divisors, so every prime number should be at least twice. So if the number is divisible by three, then it's square divisible by nine. And obviously this cannot be a square because it's divisible by three but not divisible by nine. Some of its, some of its digits. Okay, that's the first problem. Now the second problem. Okay, there is a number n and there is a number k times n. Now, what's known about k is that k minus 1 is not divisible by 3. That's a condition. It's a known fact. Now, what's also known is that the sum of digits of n is exactly the same as sum of digits of k times n. Now we have to prove that n is divisible by 9. Okay, how can it be proven? Now, back to divisibility by, by 3 and by 9. Now, the remainder, again, if you will represent our number as in this format, if you represent our number in this format. Now this part is divisible by 3 and 9. This one might or might not be divisible by 3 and 9. But what I would like to say is that the remainder of division of the total number by 3 or 9 is exactly the same as remainder of division of some of its digits by 3 or 9. Because this piece is divisible by 3 or 9 so if there is a remainder, it's only because this is not divisible by 3 or 9, okay? Like, for example, take, I don't know, 17. Now, 17 divisible by, let's say, 3. 15 is divisible, remainder would be 2. Sum of its digits is 8, 1 plus 7. And the result of division of 8 by, by, by 3 is what? Uh, what's the remainder? The remainder is 2, because 6 is divisible, so 8 has a remainder too, the same remainder. And the same remainder, r remainder is because some of the digits is basically part of the representation of the number in this particular case. Okay, so some of the digits of the number and um, the number itself have the same remainder dividing by 9. Now, I know the sum of the digits of this guy is equal to sum of the digits of this guy. Okay? Which means this and this 
have the same remainder by division of, of, uh, b uh, if, if divided by 9 as this and this. Now, what does it mean? It means that n can be represented as 9 times, let's say, a1 plus some remainder, and k times n can also be represented as 9 times a times b plus the same remainder. Since some of these digits is the same as some of these digits, and remainder of division of number and some of its digit is the same, so all of these will have the same remainder r, which means their difference, kn minus n, would be divisible uh, b minus a, r and r would cancel, so the difference is divisible by 9. But what is this difference? It's k minus 1 times n. k minus 1, not divisible by 3, as I said. So the only if, if the whole thing is divisible by 9, and this piece is not divisible even by 3, so this is divisible by 9. And that's the answer to this problem. Again, we are basing, we are, the base of this uh, uh, solution is that the remainder um, in division by 9 between number and sum of its digits is the same. So this and this give the same remainder. And these are equal, so this is also the same remainder. And if it's the same remainder, the difference would be divisible, and since k minus 1 is not divisible by 3, then by 9 should be divisible. The n should be divisible by 9. Okay, that's my second problem. Now, the third one. And again, don't forget that you're watching this lecture first before you read the notes. Don't forget to pause the lecture before I start presenting a solution. So, the third one. Okay, so we have a number 9 which has only 9 as a digit in its decimal representation. Now, let's assume that the number k is prime. Uh, I actually not really use this very much, but just for definitiveness. Let's just assume that the number of these nines is prime, like 5, for example. 9, 9, 9, 9, 9. Okay, so that's given. Next. Uh, we have to find another number, m, which contains only once, I don't know, p times, which is divisible by this one. Okay, so again, I would like to find a number which contains only once, digit 1, which is divisible by this one. Okay, solution. I mean, pause the, pause the video, think about it yourself. Here's the solution. Now, n can be represented as 9 times 1, 1, 1, k times, right? That's obvious. So, if m is divisible by n, m should be divisible by 9, which means that the sum of digits of m should be divisible by 9. But it contains only uh, digits 1. So, sum of its digits is basically the number of digits 1, which is, as I said, p. So, basically, p should be divisible by 9, because the sum of these digits is exactly as many digits, which is, which is p. Okay, so, first of all, we are looking for number which is divisible by 9, and that's requiring that the number of digits should be divisible by 9. On the another side, it should be divisible by this number. 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, uh, p times. What are the numbers which are at the same time divisible by this number and 
divisible, and, and the number of these should be divisible by 9. Well, let's just take the number which is exactly the same as m. So if I will put m, that would be 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. It's divisible by this one, obviously. But I don't know how many digits, I mean, I do know that the number of digits is, um, is, is k. Uh, so basically, uh, it's a prime number. So it's a prime number. So definitely the, this number of digits uh, is not divisible by 9. But what I can do, I can put another number in front of it, the same. Another group of... This would be k. This would be k. So it's 2k. Well, is 2k divisible by 9? No. But if I will continue this and I put 9 times groups of k, the number of digits would be what? k times 9. Since number of digits is k times 9, it's divisible by uh, some of them. Since all of them are ones, they will be divisible by, by 9. And at the same time, each group contains k digits exactly as, as this one, as this one is in its representation as 9 times. Yes, here, as this one. And each one is divisible. So basically the whole number is this number n times 10 to some power, whatever the power is, uh, then another n plus to again 10 to some power etc which means it will be divisible by by this by this can well not actually n I meant only this part of this n this is n with um, a bar at the top okay so we repeat this piece k times digit 1 nine times in a row and that gives us divisibility by both nine and this n with a bar on the top and that's the answer that's the number that's the number m which we are looking for okay so this is this uh, now the fourth We have a number n which is equal to k plus 1, k plus 2, etc., 2k. The product of number numbers. Where k is something, doesn't really matter. Now the question is if I will represent this number n as a product of uh, prime numbers. How many number two will occur? So n is supposed to be equal to two to some kind of a power times three to some power, etc. Prime numbers. Question is how many twos will be there? So if I will start dividing n by two, how many times it will be able to divide n by two? Okay pause the video and here is my answer now as you see this is the product of all the numbers from k plus 1 to k now what if I will add to this product all the numbers from 1 to k so I will have 1 times 2 times 3 etc times k times k plus 1 plus k plus 2 etc 2k minus 1, 2k. And divide by the same 1, 2, 3k. That would be the same, right? 
No problem there. Great. Now, from this, from the numerator, it has all the numbers from 1 to 2k. There are odd numbers and there are even numbers. So let's just separate them. 1, 3, 5, etc. 2k minus 1. That's odd numbers and even numbers. 2, 4, 6, etc. 2k. And still divide by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. K. That's the same thing, right? It's equal. Equal to, well, let's separate this. 1, 3, 5, etc. 2k minus 1. This is the one part. And look at this. These are uh, even numbers, 2, 4, 6, 2k. These are, each one of them is half of the one which is on the top. 1 is half of 2, 2 is half of 4, 3 is half of 6, k is half of 2k. So we have basically 2 times 1 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 2 times 4 etc. 2 times k divided by 1, 2, 3 etc. k. Right? And these guys are cancelling out. And I will have only 2. How many of 2's? Well, obviously k. So this is equal to 2 to the power of k times 1, 3, 5, etc. 2k minus 1. Now these are all odd numbers, so they do not contain uh, number 2 among uh, divisors. So all the 2's are here. So this number n is 2 to the power of k times something something being this. So the number of 2's is k. So you can divide it by by 2 k times. Exactly. And that's the answer to my fourth problem. Well, okay, that's it. Um, I do suggest you to read the notes for this lecture. So you go to unisor.com, choose the course, Math Plus and Problems, then go to the classification of the problems arithmetic, and this is 0, 06 in that category. That's it. Thank you very much and good luck.